Hello again everyone, it is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com. I got a very special boat to share with you, built by a master. These don't come through the shop very often. It's a cool boat, I'm excited to share it with you. So what you are looking at here is a 196 scale representation of the Russian Kilo class attack submarine. It's a diesel electric submarine that the Soviets used both in their Navy and they used extensively for export as well. This particular boat was built by a gentleman by the name of David Merriman III. And if you're not familiar with David, he's widely regarded as the godfather of RC submarines. He is the one that commercialized the watertight cylinder and really brought the hobby to the masses and allowed the hobby to begin to flourish. I want to show you this model up close because he built it, ended up in my shop, and now it's going off to a new owner. I'm going to show you what a true craftsman can do. So like I mentioned, this is a 196 scale representation of the Kilo class boat, which makes it a really convenient size to transport. It's still got pretty decent size, so its performance on and under the water is a little bit more realistic than some of the really small boats out there. Considering it's only got one rudder that's tucked underneath, it's actually got really good turning performance uh, in the water, and it's equal either uh, on the water or under the water because the, uh, the top rudder, which doesn't exist in this, um, wouldn't be in the air in the surface. I want you to take a close look at the paint and weathering on this boat. It's absolutely amazing. All the subtle streaking that salt water would offer, the uh, scum line, all the algae and growth that would occur there. If you haven't seen it, he also did a, a blueback model and on the upper rudder, he even models things like seagull poop that come down off the top of the rudder as well. This boat is set up with fully functional um, dive planes and forward dive planes powered by a 2.5 inch sub driver. Uh, this is a little bit older version, but certainly uh, very reliable and it works really, really well. This one has a lot of uh, sort of additional features built into it. We'll start at the front here though. Um, just a standard waterproof switch. Um, the good thing about that is you can actually leave this battery fully connected from when you were back uh, on the bench uh, because this is a physical uh, disconnect in the circuit. So it's not gonna drain any battery power to leave it installed in the cylinder. Moving forward, you can see uh, this is set up for a gas ballast system. Um, there is some uh, accommodation for a uh, snort with an air pump system. Um, you can see actually the air pump is in there. But for simplicity, this is just a, a gas ballast system. Moving forward here, we got our ballast servo and that actuates this linkage in the ballast tank to vent and blow the gas ballast. We have an ADF pitch controller. Now this one is a little different than the AD2 that I offer right now because uh, this is an older version that had a fail safe built into it. The idea being when you lose signal, it will blow ballast. The new units are, are called BLMs, battery link monitors, um, and that's a separate unit. Uh, on the side here, you can see uh, a DC. This is called a depth cruiser, and I am a, uh, a recent convert to putting these in boats. You're gonna see when I show you the video of this, boat in the pond. This depth cruiser does an amazing job of holding the boat at depth without you having to give any inputs via the dive planes. It's absolutely amazing how it works. The depth cruiser is connected to the forward dive planes and you basically dive to whatever depth you want. And then when you release the stick, the unit records that pressure, and you'll see there's that hose that runs forward to this little port right here. Um, 
and it'll attempt to maintain that water pressure using the dive planes. Separately, the pitch controller uses the stern planes to keep the boat level. And when you put both of these in your boat, you end up with an exceptionally stable platform uh, that just allows you to enjoy driving the boat as opposed to fighting to keep it at depth. So what we'll do now, I'm gonna show you really quickly how quick and easy it is to install the cylinder in the boat. And uh, then we'll cut to some footage of this in my pool. All right, access to the hull is super easy. There is uh, just one small bolt uh, in the back. Phillips head, it goes right here. When it's in there, you can't even see it. Lift up, slide forward, and you've got access to the hull. Um, there's all the flotation foam and everything that's uh, embedded in there. With the boat actually comes uh, that snorkel setup so there is a an intake for air that's going to be uh included in there it doesn't need it because it's a gas ballast system right now basically what we're looking at here um this is all of the ballast weight uh, and then the flotation foam in there you, you'll notice all the foam is as high up as you can uh, as you can get it we've got an intermediate shaft in here that provides propulsion power to our um, propeller in the back. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and uh, open up this Velcro, drop this in place, set the dog bone in place, match that up to the adapter. Now, if you wanted to make this a little easier, you could probably replace this with a universal joint um, that would go to the same dog bone adapter here. And that would just save this shaft from falling out every time you take it out but this works perfectly fine as well there's a little pin in the bottom of the hull that slips into a hole in the ballast tank and that locks it in place once you tighten down this velcro the cylinder is now fully locked down you'll notice that when i dropped it in place the linkage here snapped into place immediately uh, because it is magnetic and now our dive plane linkage is fully connected as well. And then we've got a little U bracket here. And this is the output for those forward dive planes. And again, that's coupled through the depth cruiser. This is the antenna. And actually, uh, if I'm going to do this properly, I'm going to tuck it underneath that Velcro and under the cylinder so that it doesn't get trapped by the upper hull when we go to install that. Tie that down. I'm gonna turn on the radio, turn on the cylinder, and it's now fully operational. If we take a look at the controls on the right hand stick, what we've got here is our dive planes forward dive planes, uh, so that's the right stick vertical. The uh, rudder is right stick horizontal. It's fairly standard uh, to set things up that way. Left stick vertical is our uh, throttle. Nice and smooth, and this thing will get up and move as you will see uh, a little later on. Channel four is not used, which is horizontal, left stick. Uh, on the back, Channel six, which is this toggle switch right here, is the stern plane override. So if you wanna do a crash dive or an emergency surface, you can override the pitch controller, which you can see working here right now. As I move the boat, those are automatically compensating for pitch, but I can override those with that switch. So I could crash dive or emergency surface there. And then the last thing is the ballast system, and that's the switch number five on the back of the unit, up and down. Down makes you go down, it'll open up the vent. The boat will submerge. And then going the other way, it'll depress that valve, it'll blow gas into the ballast system and the model will emerge. You can hear that little puff. That's the gas blowing into the ballast system. Now that that's all set up, we just drop the hull in place the dive planes locked into place 
drop our screw into the back, tighten it down, and we're ready for the pond. All right, taking a look at this boat in action, there's a few things I want to make sure that you take note of. First off, this is a pretty quick boat. It'll get up and move. Um, even though it's got a, you know, like a one inch propeller on it, um, the pairing of the motor, the prop, and the size of the boat means it gets up and moves really quickly. Um, perhaps more than scale speed, but that's absolutely fine. The other thing I want you to note is just how well it turns. Um, certainly not on a dime, but uh, well enough to put into a medium or large sized swimming pool without too much of an issue whatsoever. And the last thing that I want to show you, and this is uh, via the underwater footage that you're looking at, is just how well this craft maintains perfect depth. And I want to note as you're watching this that I am not putting any inputs into the stern or forward dive planes of this boat at this time. Everything is basically being handled automatically, autonomously by the electronics inside the boat. So the depth is being handled by the forward dive planes. You can probably see those adjusting as it moves through the water and then the stern planes are keeping it on a level pitch uh, and that as well is happening automatically. All in all, an absolutely gorgeous boat that has stupendous performance on and under the water. I'm very fortunate to have had it pass through the shop and again, big kudos to both David Merriman III who built the boat and to Kevin McLeod of KMC Electronics who puts out such amazing electronic modules for our hobby. Uh, that would be the AD2 module and the uh, DC module that make this boat so much fun to play with. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this little 96 scale Russian Kilo boat. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. If you have any questions or comments about what you've seen, I would love to hear from you. Email me anytime, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. With that, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for joining me and we will catch you next time.